All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at quadratic functions. A uh, quadratic function could be presented to you in general form. Okay, it would, would be something like this, but one side of the equation would be zero. I guess the f of x would be zero. A uh, quadratic function may be presented to us in a factored form with a binomial, two terms, square, and in this form with these letters. Uh, pay attention to the standard form that a cannot be zero because if a is zero then we don't even have a quadratic function. All right, so one of the things we're going to be looking at is um, when we graph these quadratic functions, we're going to be looking at the parabolas and we're going to want to be stating um, some information about those parabolas. For example, we're going to be wanting to know uh, what the vertex is for the parabola. Remember the vertex is the high or the low, the min or the max, uh, the peak or the valley. Uh, another way to think about it is the turning point. Uh, all parabolas that are kind of U-shaped or upside down U-shaped uh, are going to have a uh, max, a min, uh, and we call those verte uh, the, the, the vertexes or the vertices. So that's one thing we're going to be looking at is uh, how can we identify the vertex of the parabola. Another thing we're going to be looking at is uh, finding the x-intercepts. Uh, sometimes parabolas will intersect the x-axis and we're interested in, in those x-intercepts. Sometimes a parabola is uh, not going to intersect the x-axis and we will come to find that out too in our work in uh, this video. All right, we're also going to describe uh, a parabola, meaning the description is just going to involve us knowing whether the parabola opens up or down. All right, so we're either going to be working with the general form or the standard form. Okay, so if we have um, a quadratic function in the general form like this, Okay, then the vertex is going to be found by doing some computations. The x-coordinate of the vertex will be, fi be found by taking the opposite of the b-value and dividing it by 2a. It's kind of part of the quadratic formula. Uh, comma, so what's the y-value? Well, the y-value is going to be what we get when we take that input value, that x-value, or whatever number we find, negative b over 2a, and we evaluate it back into the function plug it back into the original uh, general form. All right, so this one's a little bit cumbersome. I mean, you have a little bit of computations to do, but the calculator can kind of help us with the work with that, I guess. All right, so that vertex, like I said, isn't easily identifiable, but look over here. If you have uh, a quadratic equation that's in standard form, the vertex is easy to identify. The vertex will have the coordinates hk. All right, so let's look at our first example. Okay, here's what you're going to be asked to do. You're going to be asked to describe the graph of the parabola. All that's going to involve is you knowing whether or not the parabola opens up or down. Well, if A is positive, either here or here, the graph of the parabola is going to open up. If A is negative, the graph of the parabola opens down, and that's it. The other part of our work is going to be to identify the vertex. And the x-intercepts. All right, so here we go. First example. So the first thing we can do is we can look at this and identify, you know, or describe the graph. So uh, if this is our problem, I'm looking at it and A is negative 1, then I know that the parabola opens down. Um, I think I'm going to record that over here. I'm just going to put downward. That's probably the way you'll see it uh, in the textbook. All right, so we've done that. We've described the graph. Now let's identify the vertex and the x-intercepts. We'll tackle the vertex first. Well, this is not in standard form. It's in general form, so we have to use these formulas here. All right, so let's see if we can find um, the vertex. All right, so the x-coordinate of the vertex, when in general form, is negative b over 2a. B is 2, so we're going to make it negative 2, twice A. A is negative 1, 
Let's simplify. So x is equal to negative 2 over negative 2 or 1. All right, for us to find the y coordinate, what we're going to do is we're going to plug 1 back into the original function to get the y that belongs to this. So I'm going to put a comma here and I'm going to do f of 1. So x gets replaced with 1. I'm going to plug in 1 everywhere I see x, perform the computations, and I'll have the y coordinate of the vertex. One squared is one, but the opposite of one is negative one. Order of operations, we're gonna have, have you do the power first. All right, two plus five is seven. Seven plus negative one is six. Okay, so what this tells us is, this is x, this is y. We now know what the vertex is. The vertex of the parabola is gonna be one, six, and that parabola is gonna open downward. So we could kind of quickly sketch it at this point. We could plot this point and have it open downward. Okay, if we wanted to be a little more specific and get the x-intercepts, that would kind of nail the parabola down in a, in a better location. All right, so let's tackle finding the x-intercepts. So I see I have some space over here, so I'm gonna kind of come over here and uh, state that I'm um, trying to find the x-intercepts. All right, so when uh, we're looking for the x-intercepts, remember we're on the x-axis, so that means the y-coordinates are zero. Well, what is y in the original equation? Y is f of x. So for x-intercepts, we're gonna set the y, or f of x, equal to zero. So take the equation, set it equal to zero. Okay, so how do we solve this? Well, if you might remember from our previous work, we can um, use the method of factoring. Remember, these are the techniques, factoring. Um, I think we extracted square roots. I think we used the quadratic formula. And I think we completed the square. So those are our choices to solve this. Okay, I don't know what method you guys prefer, but you can use any of these if they work. Now, when I look at this, the first thing I'm going to try is factoring. I don't mind factoring, uh, but I can identify that with factors of five, uh, or yeah, with factors of five, I'm never going to get two. So factoring isn't going to work. That one's all out. The square root and the, uh, and the completing the square method kind of go hand in hand. I'd have to almost complete the square on this so that I could extract the, um, the roots. Uh, some of you guys like the quadratic formula. If you wanted to jump into that, okay, you have previous notes that would remind you about what that formula is. But if you remember the previous video, I wanted to practice completing the square. So I'm going to use the method of completing the square to solve this equation for x to identify where on the axis this parabola that opens downward intersects the x-axis. So at this point, that's what I'm going to do is complete the process of completing the square. All right, if I'm gonna complete the square, I want the coefficient on x squared to be positive, so that's not a problem. I'm gonna multiply every term by negative one, so that would result in my getting x squared minus two x minus five equals zero. Right, I'm gonna complete the square to find the x values where the graph cuts through the x-axis. So notice that a is not one. This is the easier of completing the square. So keep the variable terms on one side. We got the blank, move the negative five over. Half of b squared. Half of negative two is negative one squared. You're gonna add a one, okay? Because uh, I had not factored anything out, I'm just gonna add a one here. Looks like I'm losing some things. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the square root. That wasn't equals. Remove the absolute value. Add the one. My two x-intercepts are x equals one plus square to six and x equals one minus square to six. That might be kind of hard to plot, but uh, you could use a calculator to kind of help identify what that decimal is so that you could um, find the two x-coordinates, but, um, but that's it. 
It didn't ask us to sketch a graph or anything. It just asked us to describe the graph that opens downward, find the vertex. It's in general form, so we use the formulas uh, to get the x-intercepts. I'm going to use the method of completing the square. So let's look at example two. All right, so here we go. Hmm. All right, so let's describe the graph. So this is a parabola that's going to open upward because A is positive. Okay, our next task is we want to find uh, the vertex. Well, I noticed that it's not in uh, standard form. Uh, so in this case, I need to um, just find the vertex by using the formulas. So let me find x first. It's negative b over 2a. Opposite of b would be positive 4 over 2 times a. a here is 4. So x equals 4 over 8 or a half. Ooh. So we're going to plug in 1 half. So what is h of 1 half? Everywhere you see x, replace it with a half. Oh. A half squared is a fourth. A fourth of four is one. Minus two plus twenty-one. Uh, 21 plus 1 is 22, 22 minus 2 is 20. Okay, so the vertex has coordinates 1 half and 20. So you could plot that on your number line. Uh, and notice the graph opens upward. If you wanted to think about the x-intercepts here, okay, before we go and find the x-intercepts, I want you to think about what, what's happening here. I'm going to draw a little sketch of what's going on over here. Think about where the vertex is. If this is 1, and half is here, and I go up to 20. So if I plotted the vertex, it'd be about right here. Remember, the parabola opens upward. Am I going to have any x-intercepts? No, I'm not, but I need to verify that I'm not going to have any x-intercepts. This parabola never cut through the x-axis. So the way to verify is to see what happens in our work when we go to locate x-intercepts. And what in our work reveals to us Okay, that we don't have any x-intercepts. So let's just proceed as normal. We're going to complete the square okay, to find the x-intercept. So the first thing I'm going to do to get the x-intercept is let y or h of x be 0. Okay, completing the square to get the x-intercepts, we'll look at 4. We're going to have to factor that out in a minute, but let's move over the 21. Oh, gosh, I hope things don't start disappearing. Uh, pfft, there we go. All right, let's factor out the 4 first, just this number. Then I can put a blank. Half of b, well, half of negative 1 would be negative 1 half. Square negative 1 half is positive 1 fourth. Okay, but it's not just 1 fourth I'm adding over here that I need to add over here. Okay, it's the product of 4 and 1 fourth, and that product is 1 whole. So I'm really adding an extra 1 whole over here after I multiply. So I need to add a 1 whole over here. Continue factoring into a binomial square equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 4. hoping you already see it. When I bring in the square root, I'm going to have an imaginary number. So what does that mean for us in our work? Okay, At this point, there are no real solutions. So I'm just going to put down here no real 
answers, no real solutions. So what does that mean as far as the graph is concerned? That's a U. Well, it means that I'm never going to cut through the x-axis, and that's what we had thought that was going to take place. All right, let's do one more example. All right, so look at our third example here. Um, we're going to continue the same objectives. Um, again, it's in general form. It's not in vertex form. None of these were made easy for us, unfortunately, to where if it was in standard form, we could just identify the vertex easily. That might come up later. All right, let's persevere through this. So we know this is a parabola that opens downward. All right, let's find the vertex. Opposite B over twice, oh brother, A. Negative 16 divided by negative four. Negative 16 divided by negative four would be four. And then let's find F of four. Four squared is 16 times negative two is negative 32. This product is 64. I'm gonna add the two negatives and get negative 63, so that makes it easy to collect with positive 64, so that's positive one. So my vertex is four, one. So again, let's think about what that means, what we have this information. If the vertex is 4, 1, here's 4, here's 1, and it opens downward, am I going to have x-intercepts? Yep, I am. It's just a matter of my finding them by completing the square. Ooh, it didn't like that. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, x-intercepts, that's when y is 0 or f of x is 0, and again, just to remind you, I didn't in, in example 2, but the different techniques for um, solving this would be factoring, completing the square, extracting the roots of quadratic formula, you can use whatever you want, I'm just going to practice the skill of completing the square. Okay, let's move the constant to the other side. Okay, because a is not one, we're gonna factor out the negative two. And be careful when you factor out a negative two because you have to make the adjustment on that operation so it becomes minus. Okay, I can then put my um, little blank here. I think it's equals 31. These are starting to disappear, so it's a good thing we're almost done. All right, so in this blank right here, I'm gonna put half of b squared, so that would be, um, negative 8 squared is 64 but don't just put 64 over here first you need to multiply by negative 2 whoa 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 hang on negative 2 I was too busy worried about making the adjustment here that I forgot to take out the 2 from the 16 whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. that's not gonna work okay so dividing out a negative 2 make the adjustment here but then also let me take the 2 out of 16 which results in 8. Oh my goodness, so that's going to change this. That's okay, we'll change it quickly. Uh, half of negative 8 is negative 4. Square that, this would be 16. There we go. So you might want to erase yours. It's probably quicker for you to do that than it is for me to do this. Okay, now back on track. Okay. Whew. All right, next thing we're going to do is... Um, we're going to, instead of add 16 over here, we're going to multiply uh, 16 times um, negative 2, and we're going to get negative 32. All right, so this becomes the product again of negative 32, so we're going to want to include a minus 32 here. All right, working our way down here. Let's see what happens. 
This will factor into quantity x minus 4 squared equals, this is going to result in negative 1, but don't panic yet because we don't have to bring in the square root yet until I divide by negative 2. Don't panic. There we go. When I divide by a negative 2, the result over here is going to be positive so that I can extract the roots. Okay, let's bring in the radical. Absolute value. Again, square root of 1 can be, uh, can be simplified to just 1, and you can just leave the square root of 2 in the bottom. Remove the absolute value. You have plus minus. Let's add the 4. Again, I'm not going to require it. You could rationalize that denominator if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. I think we've done enough work as it is. Okay. Alrighty. So hopefully good, three good examples for you guys when you approach your homework.